Well, so today we are looking at the digestive system part two, and it's the oral cavity of the stomach. Functions of the oral cavity. So firstly, you have sensory analysis of the food before swallowing, mechanical digestions through actions of the teeth, tongue, and palatal surfaces, lubrication by mixing of mucus and saliva, and chemical, chemical digestion of the carbohydrates and lipids. So the accessory organs of the tongue are the tongue, which has four primary functions, mechanical digestion by compression, abrasion, and distortion, manipulation to assist in chewing and to prepare the food for swallowing, <clears throat> sensory analysis by touch, temperature, and taste receptors, secretion of mucins, and lingual lipase. Then you have the teeth, which is assisted by tongue while chewing, Dentin, which is a mineralized matrix, a teeth similar to that of bone and does not contain cells. So, the enamel, hard calcified tissue covering the dentin is in the crown of the tooth. Because it contains no living cells, tooth enamel cannot repair damage from decay or from wear. It projects on a gum line. Then there's the pulp chamber, the space occupied by the pulp, the soft tissue, the center of your teeth, containing nerves, blood vessels, and connective tissue. You have the enamel, which is a hard outer covering. Then you have dentin. That part of the tooth that is beneath the enamel and the cementum. It contains microscopic tubules, <coughs> which are small hollow tubes of canals. When dentin loses its protective covering to the enamel, the tubules allow heat and cold or acidic or sticky foods to stimulate the nerves and cells inside your tooth. This results in sensitivity. <coughs> so cementum is a hard connective tissue which covers the tooth root, giving attachment to the periodontal ligament. And as I said before, the pulp is a soft tissue containing nerves, blood vessels, and CT. <clears throat> so the root of the tooth sits in a bony socket known as the tooth alveolus. It is a layer of cement covers the dentin of the root, which protects and anchors the periodontal ligament. The periodontal, the peri periodontal ligament extends from the dentin of the root to the alveolar bone, which creates a gonfosis, a strong articulation. So here you can see on the right hand side, the adult teeth on the right side of the upper and the lower jaws. So you have incisor teeth which are blade shaped located at the front of the mouth, used for clipping or cutting and have a single root. Then you have the canine teeth also known as cuspids which are conical with single pointed cusp and used for tearing or slashing and have a single root. You have premolar teeth also known as bicups, bicuspids which are flattened rounds, two prominent rounded cusps which are used to crush, mash and grind. And have one or two roots. Then you have molar teeth, which are very large, flattened crowns, four to five prominent round the cusps, and are used for crushing and grinding, and have two to three roots. So, mastication, which is chewing, the food is forced from the oral cavity to the vestibule and back across the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. The muscles of mastication close jaws, slide lower jaw from side to side. The tongue, the tongue compacts chewed foods into a bolus, which is a mouse, moist, rounded, rounded ball, fairly easy to swallow. So saliva is, a, is essential to the maintenance of oral health. It is very dilute and is composed of 99% water. It contains electrolytes, phosphates, antibodies, proteins, enzymes, and mucins. As an average flow, the average flow of saliva in the health is 1.1 to 1.5 liters each day. It is produced by an accessory of your digestive system known as salivary glands. 65% is from the submandibular glands and 20% is from parotid glands. 67% is from the sublingual glands and the rest is from the minor glands. <coughs> so, saliva has many functions which include cleaning the oral surfaces, moisture and lubricating food, keeping the pH of the mouth near 7.0, controlling populations of bacteria limiting acids that they produce, Dissolving chemicals that stimulate taste buds and initiating digestion of complex carbohydrates of salivary am amylase. The pharynx to flow is a common passageway for fruit, to liquid, and air. When food enters the pharynx, involunt involuntary muscle contractions shuts off the airways. The regions of the pharynx include the nasal pharynx, oral pharynx, and laryngeal pharynx. Food passes through, pharynx, through parts of the pharynx on its way to the esophagus. The esophagus is a hollow muscular tube that conveys food and liquids to the stomach. It is about 25 centimetres long and 2 centimetres wide. <clears throat> it lies posterior to the trachea and it is in a collapsed form and not swallowing. 
Into the abdomen through the esophageal esoph hiatus and diaphragm. So, so it's made no time for swallowing all his dead retition. This can be initiated voluntarily but proceeds automatically. You also have the swallowing reflex which begins when tactile receptors on the palatal arches and soft palate are stimulated by bolus. There are three phases, the butyl, pharyngeal and esophageal phases. So in the butyl phase, you can see here, it begins with a compression of the bolus against the hard palate. The attach of the tongue then forces the bolus into the oropharynx and assists in elevating the soft plate and it seals off the nasopharynx. So once the bolus enters the oropharynx, the reflex responses begin and the bolus is moved towards the stomach. The second phase is known as the pharyngeal phase and this begins as the bolus comes into contact with the palatal arches and the posterior pharyngeal wall. So the larynx is elevated and, fold, and the folding of the epileuritis results in the bolus passing the closed waters. At the same time, the uvula and the soft palate block passage back to the nasopharynx. And the final phase is the esophageal phase. And this occurs when the contractual pharyngeal muscles forces the bolus through the entrance to the esophagus. Once it's in the esophagus, the bolus is pushed towards the stomach by a peristaltic wave. <coughs> the stomach is shaped like an expanded J. Its short, lesser curvature forms a medial surface and a long, greater curvature forms a lateral surface. The anterior and posterior surfaces are rounded. Shape and size vary from person to person from one meal to the next. There are four major parts, fundus, cardia, body and pylorus. The major functions of the stomach include the temporary storage of ingested food, mechanical digestion with muscular contractions, chemical digestion of food with acid and enzymes. So here you can see the parts of the stomach, the esophagus, the fundus, which conducts diaphragm, the cardia, which contains abundant mutant glands, the longitudinal layer, circular muscle layer, oblique muscle layer, the body, which is the larger parts of the stomach, and mixing tank for food and secretions, the lesser curvature, the medial surface, the greater curvature, the lateral surface. You can see here the pyloric sphincter and the pyloric canal and the pyloric antrum, as well as the duodenum. So, The stomach is lined with surface mucous cells that secrete an alkaline mucus. Gastric glands in the fundus and body of the stomach secrete gastric juice. Each, each gastric prick communicates with several gastric glands and they have parietal cells and teeth cells. They secrete about 1,500 millilitres of gastric juice each day. <clears throat> so the parietal cells secrete intrinsic factor which is a glycoprotein that helps absorb vitamin B12 in the small intestine. This is responsible for the acidic conditions in the stomach, secrete hydrogen ions and chlorine ions into the stomach. Secretion stimulated by gastrin, histamine and neurotransmitters. For the chief cells, this is the most abundant near base of gastric glands. It is activated by hormones and neurotransmitters. They secrete pepsinogen which is an inactive proenzyme. Pepsinogen, pepsin, pepsinogen is converted to pepsin which is an active proteolytic enzyme by HCL with a gastric lumen. The G cells, these are endo, anterior endocrine cells located at the base of the gastric glands and stomach and duodenum. They are found primarily in the pyloric antrum. They secrete the peptide hormone gastrin. They are carried in the bloodstream to fundus and cardia and they increase stomach motility and secretion by gland cells. To summarize, the stomach serves as a temporary food storage, mixing the ingested food with digestive juices that it start to break down the food. Activity of hydrochloric acid and enzymes start to break down of proteins, for example. Mixing of food of di food and digestive juices is called chyme. This is released through the pyloric sphincter to a small